Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I want to talk to you about life beating you down. Sometimes it seems like this is what we hear in our lives. And it feels like a never ending stream. And when we go down memory lane, we can pick out the times when it seemed like we would never get out. We would never get out from under the load, the burden. Listen, if life is sitting on your head right now, if, if part of life is beating you while the other part of life is sitting on you, and you feel pinned down, trapped, no way out, let me share what God shared with me years ago when I was going through. And this analogy really helped me a lot. So here's question number one. What calling is on your life? What giftings and callings have you detected thus far? All right, here's your analogy. Ready for the allegory? All right. I watched the men, and this is what God showed me. I watched the men years ago in my old house when I was laying pavers. My driveway was all chopped up. Uh, the cement was so bad, the rubble, the, uh, the rocks and the, the pebbles and everything was coming out from underneath it. It was crazy. So I wanted something that could adjust and shift with the earth when the neighbor's tree trunk, I mean the neighbor's tree roots tore up my driveway. And instead of tearing it up, it would just shift around with pavers and still look good. When the paver, when the men came to lay the pavers, they brought this item, and I didn't know what it was for. They laid it aside, and the first thing they did was they broke up all the old cement. Right? They broke it up. There's the initial beating. Broke that bad boy up. And sometimes we feel like life is breaking us down, don't we? They broke that stuff up and shoved the pile of, of blocks and cement and crap all up in a little hill at the end of the driveway. <clears throat> The next thing, I want to tell you, oh, this just hit me. Remember the cement. I'm coming back to that because God just gave me an idea of the broken pieces of your life. Oh, okay. <laughs> there may be another video. I don't know, but hang in there. So here, the men are getting the soil. They're moving the soil around, and they bring out the compactor. That's what it's called that machine and they start it up and brrr, it sounds almost like a, uh, I can't think of the name but anyway like a drill but it's it's a rapid beating and the sound is annoying and it's got a spray of water a mist of water that's steadily misting the soil while it's beating well you know what that beating does it's softening, first of all, the shower is softening up the soil, the top soil. The compactor is packing that soil in so it's a nice, tight, solid mass. Why do they have to pack it in? Because the beating makes for a solid foundation that can carry loads of weight. You get me? You see where I'm going with this? Mm -hmm. Think of your giftings and callings. Think of the responsibilities God's going to lay on you in the future after the beating is done. The different processes, the different stages of life's beating. Breaking you up, beating you down, compacting you, beating you some more, showering you, beating you some more, showering. This is life. 
Now, the guys get everything together, they do the measuring, and that's the interim period. The period when we're like, oh, tell me when it's done. All right. They're measuring. That's the boring part. Oh, I hate that. The preparation is a dog. We hate prep. So here they are measuring, stringing, doing all the stuff. They get strings on the poles, make sure everything is level. Then, then they bring out the bricks. And you're like, woo, we're getting ready to see this happen now. And they lay the bricks and they compact them. And first, they lay a little cement on the edges to make sure it locks everything in place. And then they go in and lay in all the pavers. Well, after the pavers are laid, it's beautiful. Oh, I'm so ready to park my car on it. Oh, no, no, no. No. You know, you can't park your car on it. We'll be back tomorrow. Be back tomorrow for what? Out comes this stupid compactor again. That machine. That noisy, annoying machine and they're banging on the pavers on the pavers you gotta bang on the pavers now so what are they doing making the pavers and the soil compact into a solid solid mass that can hold even more weight how much weight can you hold now <clears throat> They sprinkle the sand. They're not done. Now they got to smear the sand all over the place. And they're smearing it all in between the pavers. You know what the sand is there for? To stop them from shifting so much. But they still have enough flexibility, but not enough to pop out of place. So what do they do? They pull that old ugly machine out and they're showering and compacting again. You talk about a tedious process, but when it's all said and done, you could park a truck on that bad boy and you will not have a sinkhole because it's strong enough to carry its own weight. Now, back to the cement blocks and, and boulders and the pieces that were shoved aside in that hill. All of that happens to you. I heard T.D. Jake say it. Nothing, no heartache, no loss is wasted. God will use every crumb from it. I wanted a patio. <clears throat> Not a patio, a, tear, a porch. So that my husband and I could reel him out in a wheelchair and set him out and we could sit on the porch together. We couldn't do that in our yard. We didn't have one. So, they took those old cement boulders and the old uh, grant granules and crumbs and pebbles and rocks and piled it up in a mound and poured cement and piled some more and poured cement. By the time they got through, we had a two-foot-tall porch. It was beautiful. I mean it was beautiful. When I get done with this video, I'm going to use the picture of the way my house looked, my old house, after all the work was done with my car sitting on the pavers. And you'll see the porch behind it under the big picture window. I am telling you, the thing of beauty came from a painstaking ordeal. They didn't have to go and buy new equipment, new boulders, new rocks, because we had all that stuff from all that old driveway. They used it for my good. It looked like it was for my shame, because I was ashamed to let anybody know I lived in that house, the way it was all broken down and the driveway looked horrible. It was embarrassing. But I was able to get alone and get that bad boy done. I am telling you, it was beautiful. It was so worth it. So listen to this. Listen to this. When all was said and done and all the paving was done, my house that was the ugly duckling on the whole block was the prettiest house. 
on the whole block. And what happens in your life, the ugly moments, the ugly episodes, the ugly trials, the, 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 <clears throat> the setbacks, the losses, the frustrations, the mind-blowing, agonizing, what the heck is going on, events that go on in your life will turn into a thing of beauty in you. And God will be able to say, you have been faithful in the small. Now I will make you ruler over much. I can use you now because you have been proven, tried, and you've come out like pure gold. <laughs> Are you willing to go through the process for the high calling of God?